is there's been no change on the long-term technicals of, of gold. The short terms, there's there's changes. We've been in a little, little bearish uh, wedge declining when we were hit 2060. That apex comes together at the end of the month. So we could still go sideways for a couple more weeks, but we should see a resolution to this, meaning a meaningful move up or down. You have to leave the reservation. There is a possibility to be down within the next two weeks. This kind of sideways movement should be coming to an end, and there is a significant mood move coming afoot uh, as we get into summer. The Federal Reserve's decision to hold off on raising interest rates had a mixed impact on the stock market. Initially, the news was received positively, leading to a temporary surge in the S&P 500 index. However, this upward trend was short-lived, and the market eventually lost most of its gains. Investors had anticipated the Fed to continue raising rates to control inflation, so the decision came as a surprise. The decline in the stock market has led some investors to turn to gold as a safe haven asset. However, gold has also been relatively stable in recent weeks, and some analysts believe that it is due for a correction. Peter Grandick, founder of Peter Grandich & Co., believes that gold will undergo notable fluctuations in the coming weeks. He points out that the decline in gold prices attracts increased demand from individuals who see it as an opportunity to purchase, thus contributing to the stability of the gold market. Currently, interest rates worldwide are already at their highest point or are about to reach that level. At the same time, when prices go up, inflation is starting to go down in some countries, including the United States. However, it has remained high and stubborn in most places. Because of this, gold recently reached a new all-time high. Many people still see gold as a great way to protect themselves against rising prices and economic troubles. It's like a solid and stable currency. With concerns about China's economy and high inflation in Europe and other important economic areas, gold's appeal will likely remain strong. Of course, that doesn't mean gold won't go down in price from here. Gold miners would be happy to sell as much gold as they can at these high prices. But because there's a strong demand for gold and the supply is growing little, there should be a limit to how low the prices can go in the long run. Grandich recognizes there are ups and downs in the short term, but the long-term indicators for gold have stayed the same. He mentions a pattern called a bearish wedge, which suggests that gold prices might go down in the short term. However, he expects this pattern to change soon, which could lead to a significant movement either up or down in gold prices. We will now present you with clips from Peter Grandich's interview with Liberty and Finance. But wait, there's more. To stay updated with all our future uploads, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. Thank you and enjoy the video. I think we still find gold uh, in particular caught in a multi-year trading range, uh, capped near the old highs and great support the lower we go in the 1900s. You could attest to the physical demand uh, and you like to see it break, but what I tell everybody, since it's almost a 10-year cup and handle formation, if you ever believed in these calls of four or five thousand dollar gold, you would need a, a foundation of 10-year base in order to get to that level. Rising metal prices, particularly in producing mining companies, that plays more of a role than in juniors, because normally a producer doesn't see a net major increase in his op or her operation costs if gold goes up $100. They're still basically producing it around the same price. So that increase basically all falls to the bottom line. So if you want to say what is the best leverage way, it's a producer. It's not necessarily a junior resource company that's hoping to find something. But there's no question, having been in that market for most of my life, only out a few years, I can think of an only similar time was in late 1999 when gold broke under $300 and the junior resource market basically was considered dead. I mean, there were people that basically left it and switched into internet companies and things of that nature at that point in time. That's the closest memory I have to similar to what the mood and the valuations that are being placed now. But what's so hard to compare it to then was gold was 300 then and now it's 1950 and yet we're seeing this. So probably arguing for what to support what you said is this is probably the cheapest they've ever been at least in the last 40 years i think that the thing we have to recognize is that there's a bias i call them the don't worry be happy crowd i mentioned it earlier 
it's very difficult to knock those people completely off their feet and unconscious. You can knock them down, but it, 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 they're kind of like uh, certain bugs that you kill a few and you think they're gone and they're back a, a day later. There's still a, a tilt to equities. That's why I've always say it's difficult for people to expect things like gold to be recommended by those people because that flies exactly in the face of what they make their living off of. So that, that's one of the reasons why I don't think there's suddenly going to be a crash. Now, what, what could cause we wake up one night overnight a crash? Well, certainly some some sort of thing that really some water broke out, uh, somebody decided to use a nuclear weapon. I think the other thing that's not discounted besides the banks, it's frustrating for those who believe there's a, a lot of meat to it. And that is what looks to some, and I'm one of them, that the Biden situation is really could be the biggest scandal in modern era. But it would have to get legs. Right now, the mainstream media and the Democrats do the Sauls and Schultz. I see nothing. I know nothing. But the bottom line is, if that can break and be substantiated to where they can't ignore that, that political dramatic thing. People don't talk about is if we keep creating all this debt at this record, the more dollars out there is more inflationary. And yes, I know there's a certain camp that talks about that, that, you know, the, the gold camp, the hard, hard camp, you know, it sells, you know, things for danger and stuff like that. But it, you can't avoid inflation with the money creation that continues to happen. Governments around the world are taking steps to regulate cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. This is because cryptocurrencies are decentralized and not controlled by any government or central bank. Their prices can be highly volatile, posing financial stability and security risks. Governments aim to establish guidelines and safeguards to protect their economies and citizens by regulating cryptocurrencies. However, these regulatory efforts maintain the value of gold. In fact, they can be viewed as a positive indication of gold's significance. Grandich believes that there are several reasons why gold will perform well. For example, central banks have significant influence over the global economy and have consistently purchased gold as a long-term investment. This indicates their confidence in gold's enduring value. Additionally, the ongoing trend of people seeking alternatives to the U.S. dollar contributes to the demand for gold, further supporting its value. Well, I think there's a few things. The one, obviously, still is the con consistent central bank selling, I'm uh, sorry, buying, and that continues. And we said now for several months, they're not buying for a trade. They're actually buying because of the continuing, and this would be reason number two, the de-dollarization, the movement away from the dollar, and America in general continues uh, to gain foot here. And realistically, there's still a very underinvested North American investor when it comes to gold. In Asia, not as much, uh, because there they, they, they recognize and have a history of having more exposure to the metals. But it's clearly not, I would find it very hard to, and if you force me to, to try to come up with a reason why gold should fall a few hundred dollars. But I don't have any issues at all of finding reasons for it to go up several hundred dollars. And so the fundamentals still greatly outweigh whatever negatives are out there. I think part of the negatives, by the way, Elijah, are people who are also born to be anti-gold or like the call, you know, they treat it like, you know, kryptonite. And then there's those who still are holding their hopes on to that Bitcoin is the new gold and uh, to knock gold is to somehow help, help the Bitcoin of the world, which in itself is not going anywhere as fast. And we, we continue to see government, especially here in the U.S., basically moving to control it or influence to the downside. So I, I, I find it very hard uh, to justify, even if I was forced to, uh, reasons to be bearish on gold. Now, what this sideways movement has caused, and you probably hear that because I know I hear it, is people are growing impatient. <clears throat> and what compounds that is that they own things other related to physical bullion that aren't doing as well, mostly mining shares. And therefore, their disappointment on the metals is really exaggerated because their others is not working. In a sense, they have something to blame, and that's because Gold's not going through the roof, which would 
hopefully lift up their holdings. But overall, I think the picture remains very bright for gold and silver. I've seen more capitulation signs in the last couple of weeks, and I'm not counting the nasty emails and blaming me for people's faults, just total capitulation, the way stocks are trading, the way even the people who normally talk about these things online are trying to make like people have amnesia and are not talking about all their calls that didn't work out. Uh, maybe that's one of the differences. I feel like you can't hide behind a rock. You have to speak when things are good or bad. But I think that market shouldn't be confused in defense of what your work is, is owning gold and silver. This was the hard lesson that people learned. You want to own gold and silver, you got to buy the physical bullion. That That's the bottom line. Then if you want to use the leverage that could come from rising prices, that's when mining shares come into play. The stock market initially rose as investors were relieved that the Fed was not taking more aggressive action to combat inflation. However, the market has since given back some of those gains as investors worry that the Fed's decision could lead to higher inflation in the long run. Gold prices have also been volatile, rising initially on the news of the Fed's decision, but then falling back as investors realized that the Fed is still likely to raise rates later this year. Do you agree with Peter Grandich's prediction of the future of gold? Please share your thoughts and observations in the comments section below. Additionally, if you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and enable notifications to stay informed about our latest videos on silver, gold, and copper. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate your support.